Hello everyone, this is Robbie Pony, and I've come to discuss something. In the past few weeks, maybe even a month or so, we have been dealing with the issue of a certain individual in the community, who we're not even going to address by name in this video, because the whole point behind this video is not to address, is to address a different issue that we have that's going on. So if we have to refer to this individual, we will merely refer to refer to them as Crap Pile. I know that's a little bit harsh, but considering the fact that we can either call them a man due to their actions, or even a child, this is probably the best tr thing we can refer to them as. Or the closest, without insulting sewage. This is actually a... And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the fact... I need to bring up some stuff. First off... I have no connection to the analyst community, and I knew I knew don't think I even knew any of the victims of the crap pile prior to the this event. But what I do know is that I can somewhat sympathize with them and empathize with those around. As a few of you, as some of you are my close friends, you can relate to the fact that, or you, you will probably have heard of the fact that I've had friends and relatives who have been sexually abused. And because of this, while I can't say that I understand how it feels to be the victim of this abuse, I feel pain for those who do. And I also understand and empathize with those who have been around p victims of this type of abuse and maybe don't necessarily know how if they're feeling the right emotions or how they should feel. And so I'm going to give some advice. Hopefully it helps. And merely, I did try writing some notes, but what can you write for stuff like this? What this crap pile did was abhorrent. Abhor ab abhorrent. It was wrong, and it was evil. And they hurt a lot of people. <sighs> and the whole point behind this video isn't to talk about them. The point behind this video isn't even to talk about the uh, victims, but to talk to those around the victims who are close to the victims and even those who aren't necessarily close, but are not sure how they should interact with the victims. And so I'm going to tell you what my experiences have been with my friends and relatives who have gone through this type of abuse. The first thing you can do is listen. At, and the thing is, you know, and some people get this confusion. It's like, you know, if somebody's hurt or... You know, whether it pertains to death or to abuse, that they don't necessarily want to talk about it. And the thing is, to some extent, they might not. And the answer isn't to force them to talk about it. The answer is to just listen. And if they want to talk about it, just let them talk about it. And, and listen and be there. Don't be thinking about, what am I going to make for dinner? Or, how do I fix this? Because believe it or not, you can't fix this. You can't. You can't go back in time and undo what happened. You weren't there for them then. But you're there for them now. And that is what you need to focus on, is helping them now. Another thing, you can't tell them to move on. That is their decision, and they have to move on at their own time and they will move on at their own time but it takes time this isn't simply a cut on the arm this is a wound of the heart some of you may or may not understand this but when a when an abuser targets somebody and abuses them they don't just abuse them physically 
More often than not, it's also mentally. And often because of this, that person will suffer some mental consequences, some of which can, can be PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. And if you're wondering like what that is, basically I want you to imagine the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Just imagine it. Now, I want you to imagine every time you close your eyes, every time you sleep, every time in the most inopportune moments, that memory comes back almost as if you're reliving it. That's what some of these people are going through. And, you know, they, it's like, so it's like you can't tell them to, like I said, don't tell them to get over it. You know, and I, because this, that's one thing you hear a lot is you hear a lot of people like, oh, you, you got, this happened a week ago, get over it. Don't tell them that. In fact, if I find out that any of you did that, to anyone, whether it be the people who were harmed by this crap pile or somebody else who was abused, and I see you in person, I will squeeze a lemon in your eye. Largely because that well, that should be legal in theory. So yeah, you need to don't you know let them move on their own. Listen. Don't trivialize the event. That's the other thing you should not do. Don't tell them it could have been worse. Because really, it, it's pretty bad. How can you get worse than having somebody force themselves on you? Treating you as if you are their puppet, their doll. Part of my language, their sex toy. They went through that. They went through that. It's pretty bad. You can't get the. You can't get worse than that. You really can't. This is where notes would really help right now, is if I could remember anything I was going to say. It's funny how, like, it, when you say something over and over again, and it's like, you finally sit down on a camera and you can't say it. I guess the point behind this video, like I said, was to address the fact that there are victims. And a lot of people have been basically, and there's a few of you who have been actually working hard to actually support the victims. And those of you are good people. And then there's a lot of you who've just been talking about the crap pile. And while that's indeed something to discuss, I think we're kind of done with that. The witch hunt has gone on long enough. I'm not saying that, you know, that the witch hunter should not stop hunting. What I'm saying is that we need less witch hunters now. We need more medics. We need more people to listen and to be there not even to fix the problem, but just to be there to say, we are here to lift you up. We are here to hold you. We are here to care for you, to pray for you, to give you our respect and to give you our time. Because you need that from us right now. Those are These victims need support they need compassion and they just need somebody to listen and to tell them that it's not their fault it's not their f despite what the what the crap pile has told them because believe it or not all abusers do this they always try to make the blame game be the abused f make the abused think it's their fault but it's not it's the abuser's fault they're the bad guy. 
they're the ones to blame. And we need to stand up and support the victims and say, it's not your fault. It's not your fault that this perverse, sick, twisted person hurt you. Nothing. It's not your fault. And But like I said, you need to listen to them and you need to let them heal at their own pace. Whether they forgive the crap pile or not, that will be ultimately their decision. And who knows, maybe the crap pile will redeem themselves and can upgrade to a status that we can actually refer to them in a human term. But this time we cannot, because we know nothing about that situation. All we can do, because as far as we know, he's gone. He might be arrested, or he might be out on the loose. But the victims aren't gone. The victims are still there. They're still in pain, and they still need our help. And I know that's weird because of the fact that technically we can't help them. That might come as, you know, like we can't help them. We can't do anything to change what happened to them. All we can do is listen. And I think a part of the reasons why I wanted to do this video was guilt. And you might say, what do you mean? And the answer is, a lot of this stuff I learned from interacting with others. And a lot of it, and I honestly feel like there were people who were close to me who went through this abuse. And I really wasn't there for them. And so this is me basically trying to reach out to those of you who maybe who are close to these people or you know want to be close to these people in a you know friendly sort of manner and you're like i don't know how to sympathize with them i don't know how to empathize with them and the answer is unless you've been abused you can't empathize with them i can't empathize with any of the abused people i can't empathize with my relatives or my friends who are abused I can feel sorry for them. I can feel pain because they're in pain. And I can understand how... I can empathize with you, the people on the sidelines, who feel pain, who, who feel angry, who feel hatred, who feel sadness, who feel sorrow, who feel helplessness because of this. And that's why this video is here. So yeah, all I'm asking, all I'm telling you guys is to just be there for them, help them. And just, just support them how you can. Be their friends, be there for them, listen sincerely to them. And help them when they need you. That's all I have to say right now.